Hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to be working with triangles now. Triangle ABC, that's what you see right here. Triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, the size of angle B, this guy right there, the size of angle B is four times the size of angle A. In other words, it's bigger by four times. And the size of angle C is 17 degrees less than five times the size of angle A. Okay, we're going to read it again. In triangle ABC, the size of angle B is four times the size of angle A. And the size of angle C is 17 degrees less than five times the size of angle A. Now, what do we know? We know that all three angles add up to 180 degrees, and that that's always true of triangles. The three angles add up to 180 degrees. So that means angle A plus angle B plus angle C equal 180 degrees. Well, we know here, I, I went ahead and I found the answer, but here we know that A is the base angle, B is, is given in terms of A, and C is given in terms of A, which is why we're using A as uh, the, the basis for these algebraic expressions. All right, B is four times angle A, and C is 17 degrees less than five times angle A. So if we're going to add angle, this little mark means angle, angle A plus angle B plus angle C, and they equal 180 degrees, then B, angle B is 4A, and angle C is 5A minus 17. So if we add A plus 4A plus 5A minus 17, we get 180, and then all we have to do is solve for A which we do. First we add 17 to both sides of the equation, then we divide both sides of the equation by 10, and we get A equals 19.7 degrees. Meanwhile, 4 times 19.7 is 78.8, and 5 times 19.7 minus 17 is 81.5 degrees. Now here we are at the perimeter problem. The perimeter of a standard sized rectangular rug is 40 feet. The length is 2 feet longer than the width. Find the dimensions. This is most easily done, I believe with a picture. This is a rectangle. Rectangles have length and width, and length and width. And when you add the two lengths to the two widths, you get the perimeter. So there's a formula, P equals 2L plus 2W. Now, we're told that the length is, and the word is means equals, the length is two feet longer than the width. So L is two feet longer than the width. So I can substitute those, uh, uh, I can substitute two plus W for L. So I'll have P, which is the perimeter, which is 40, equals 2 times 2 plus W plus 2W. And now that I'm only using one letter, I can actually solve this equation. So we're going to have 40 equals 
2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times w is 2w, plus the 2w at the end, darn flies. All right, 40 equals 4 plus 4w, because 2w plus 2w equals 4w. Subtract 4 from both sides. We'll get 36 equals 4 W. Then you divide by 4 and divide by 4, and we get W equals 9. All right, so what do we know? We know that the width is 9 feet, and if the length is 2 feet longer than the width, then the length is going to be 11 feet. Okay, I'm back. Uh, we have a rate times distance problem here. A truck enters a highway driving 60 miles per hour. A car enters the highway at the same place five minutes later and drives 72 miles per hour in the same direction. From the time the car enters the highway, how long will it take the car to pass the truck. What we're really asking is how long will it take for the car to catch up to the truck and for their noses to be at the noses. Their, uh, uh, their noses, yeah, to be at exactly the same place. There's another complication too. Let's read this again. A truck enters a highway driving 60 miles per hour. A car enters the highway at the same place five minutes later and drives 72 miles per hour in the same direction. From the time the car enters the highway, how long will it take the car to pass the truck? Okay, what's going on with my calculator? Press alpha F1, F4, no. No, I just want to continue. Thank you very much. All right, this is a rate times distance problem with a little catch in it that's typical, typical for college algebra classes. Distance equals rate times time. Okay, we're going to have the car and the truck. And we know that the truck is driving 60 miles per hour and the car is speeding a little at 72 miles per hour. And the time that this problem wants us to use is the car's time when it entered the highway. Well, we know that the car is five minutes behind the truck. So the truck, when they catch up to each other, when the, when the truck, the car rather, when the car catches up to the truck, cab is in there somewhere, yeah. When the car catches up to the truck, okay, when the car catches up to the truck, the truck will have been going five minutes longer. So there's a temptation to just say t plus five. But that would not be correct because this is in miles per hour and this is in minutes. Now the answer is in minutes. But if we convert this to minutes per hour, can you think of what a pain that would be? Well, I don't want to do it, do you? So, I am going to convert five minutes to hours. What part of an hour is five minutes? It's five over 60, which is one twelfth. So T is gonna be in hours, and we can convert that at the end, rather than having to convert these. 
So here now, the time of the car is t, and the time of the truck is t plus one twelfth of an hour because it's been traveling longer. And how long has will the car travel until it catches up to the truck? Okay. Now, and we're talking about distance. So the distance that the car travels is 72 T. And the distance that the truck travels is 60 times t plus 1 twelfth because distance equals rate times time. Distance equals rate times time. And the distance they've traveled on the highway are going to be equal when the car catches up to the truck. They each will have traveled an equal distance from the on-ramp to where they catch up, to where they're, they're nose to nose. So I'm going to say 72t equals 60, 60 times t plus 1 twelfth. 72t equals 60t plus 60 times 1 twelfth. 72t equals 60 t plus 5. So see, it's okay now, but if you had had a 5 there, you would have said 60 times 5, and that would be 300, which would just be totally outlandish. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract 60 t from both sides of the equation. That'll leave me 12 t here. And this zeroes out, so I'll have 5. And so t equals 5 over 12. But remember, that's hours. Now we have to change to minutes. 5 twelfths times 60, because we've got 5 twelfths of an hour here, and there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 12 goes into 60 five times. Five times five is 25. So five twelfths of an hour is 25 minutes. And that is exactly what my math lab says. Now finally, this, oops, Wait a minute, kind of got behind here. There we go, and now we've got our document camera back. A mother wants to invest $11,000 for her son's future education. She invests a portion of the money in a bank certificate, a CD, which earns 4% interest, and the remainder of the money in a savings bond that earns 7%. If the total interest earned after one year is $660, how much money was invested in the CD account? Let's read it again. A mother wants to invest $11,000 for her son's future education. She invests a portion of the money in a bank certificate of deposit, a CD, that earns 4% and the remainder of the money in a savings bond that earns 7%. If the total interest earned after one year is $660, how much money was invested in the CD? This is a system problem. Remember those from intermediate algebra or algebra 2. We've got ourselves a system problem. And it's always easier to do system problems if you make a 3 by 4 table. Okay, now what's being compared? 
the money that goes in the CD and the money that goes in the, let's call it SB for savings bond. And then this is always the total when you make one of these, one of these charts. Now there are two things that are being compared here. The money, which totals to $11,000, and the interest, I'll just say int, which totals to $660. Now we're going to use x plus y in this. If we have x uh, amount of dollars in the CD and y amount of dollars in the savings bond, well, if you add x plus y, that equals $11,000. All right, now what about interest? The CD pays 4%. So that's 4% on the money that's in the CD account. So 0.04 .04 times X is the amount of interest on the funds that the mother put in the CD. And the savings bond pays 7% interest, so that's 7% of the Y dollars in the savings bond. This interest plus this interest equals $660. So we've got 0.04X plus 0.07Y equals 600, whoops, 60, should have put it over there. Well, I'll have plenty of chance. Remember when you've got decimals, you can, you can get rid of the decimals by moving the decimal place over. <clears throat> if you multiply the whole second equation by 100, and I hope this is bringing memories back, if you multiply the whole second equation by 100, let me write the first equation, you will have 4x plus 7y equals 6600. Zero, zero. Now remember when you work with systems of equations that you can solve by elimination or you can solve by substitution. Some people like elimination better, some people like substitution better. But this is college algebra, so let me suggest that we use elimination. I am going to get rid of the Y's first. Ah, wait a minute. If the total interest earned after one year is $660, uh, $660, how much money was invested in the CD? So what we're looking for is X. So if we can eliminate the Y's, we'll be left with the X's. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the entire first equation by negative 7. Now, I'm going to move over here. What that's going to do for us is give us negative 7x plus negative 7y equals negative 77,000. And our second equation is 4x plus 7y equals 66,000. Now, when we add the top equation to the bottom equation, we'll have negative 3x, this zeroes out, equals negative 11,000. Okay. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3, 
The negative threes cancel out here, leaving us with x. And I'll get my calculator. And I'll say negative 11,000 divided by negative 3 equals 3,666. And since it's money, we always round to two decimal places. 3,666. 0.67. Whoops. 0.67. And that's dollars. So the amount that the mother invested in the CD account was $3,666.67. And that's it for the story problems. Bye for now.